In this video, I'm going to show you how to plan a Squarespace website build step by step so that you have a professional looking website and you save a ton of time. There are a few things worth setting up on the front end to ensure that you crush your Squarespace web design from scratch. If you skip these steps, you could waste a whole lot of time and energy even with an awesome website builder like Squarespace. Knock these out before you go picking colors or dragging and dropping boxes and the design process will be smooth. Before I jump into planning your website real quick, I'm Clint, I help people create art for a living through content marketing, and this is the first of my four course series where you'll learn how to plan, design, optimize, and launch an awesome and completely custom Squarespace website. A well-planned new website has six elements. A keyword plan, site goals, a site route, copy or words for your main pages, an understanding of user experience, UX, and design best practices, and inspiration examples. To make this even easier, I created a free website design checklist. You can find the links for that, my other courses, as well as timestamps for this video, in case you wanna jump around, all linked up in the description box below. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find keywords for your Squarespace website for free using Google Keyword Planner so that people can find your website in search results. SEO or search engine optimization is how people find your website through Google and other search engines. People can only find your website if you have words on it that are related to what people are searching for. What better tool could you use than the one connected with the largest and most powerful search engine in the world, right? Here's how to use it for free. Use a Chrome browser and open a new incognito window. Go to ads.google.com and then click sign in. Sign in with a Google account and then click new Google ads account. Now the trick to get around sharing your credit card, click switch to expert mode. Click create an account without a campaign. Confirm your business settings. Then click explore your account. Click tools and settings and choose keyword planner from the drop down menu. You'll get two options discover new keywords and search volume and forecasts. Click discover new keywords. You can now input topics or words related to your business, brand, product, or service. Also think about what words or phrases would people use to find what you offer? What questions are your customers always asking? Notice that Google will give you suggestions to broaden your search. This can be helpful to direct you to terms or categories that you didn't even know about. You'll now see different categories, your keywords on the far left, then average monthly searches, competition, and cost per click range. Keywords that have a high amount of search volume and a high amount of competition are what we would call your primary keywords. Primary keywords are the words that your business has to go after no matter what. They're so closely aligned with what you do that it doesn't really matter if you're not able to rank for them within a month because you're gonna want to invest some time and rank for them eventually. I recommend finding 50 of these keywords. This smaller list will make it easier for you to cover them within your core pages. You'll notice two prices. These are your PPC or price per click prices. Google AdWords allows people to pay to have their content appear on the first page of Google. These numbers give you a high and low range. If you use AdWords, every time someone clicks on your website link, you get charged the price for that keyword. If the range is high, then you can bet that other companies are paying for those specific keywords. Sometimes, even if a keyword has a lower search volume, it might have a higher buyer intent. You need to get some points on the board, even if they do not all have the highest search volume. And this is where secondary keywords come into play. 
These keywords are less competitive, but are still related to your product or service. Ranking these words will eventually increase your site traffic and build your search engine rankings. Shoot for well over 100 keywords here. Think about each keyword set as being worthy of a blog post or its own content page. Look for keywords with a good amount of searches with a low or medium amount of competition. To make it easier to find these keywords, apply filters to narrow down the competition category. Click the add filter button, click competition, click matches that say low or medium. The more competitive keywords will be removed. To make it even easier, click average monthly searches and it will now display keywords from the highest to the lowest amount of monthly searches that are also low or medium in competition. Now select keywords that align with what you offer and align with what your audience wants to know. Notice that as you check off keywords, you can add them to a group. I recommend having one group for primary keywords and one group for secondary keywords. Another way to find keywords is to type in the URL of one of your competitors in the field. If you haven't already, it's good to have an idea of what kind of websites are appearing in search results for the terms that you want to rank for so that you can do it better. If you go back to the keyword planner page, you'll notice a tab that says start with a website. Click the tab and enter a competitor's URL. Voila! Now you can see what search terms they rank for. It's worth creating another list just for the overlapping keywords that you will also want to rank for. By doing this for a few competitors, you can see keywords that they have in common, as well as the keywords that they may be missing out on. And once you have your primary, secondary, and competitor list, click download keywords and you are good to go. For now, I would recommend that you copy these keywords and then put them into your Squarespace web design checklist so that you have it all in one place. So now you have a list of keywords. As you are writing the website copy for your core pages, you're going to want to include your primary keywords. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you use them on your homepage, your service page, your about page, and your portfolio page, even your contact page. But there is one crucial thing that you need to know on how not to use your keywords when writing your Squarespace website pages. If you try to spam or stuff keywords by placing them all throughout your site in an unnatural way, this will not help you. Google is actually smarter than that. This will hurt you. Don't do that. You will begin to discover how keyword research actually makes you a better writer in business because you're prioritizing the words that your customers use when creating content instead of just what you think they want. When you start to think about your content as being helpful and value-driven above everything else, then you're on the right track. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create site goals for your website so that you can build your website to crush these goals and save a ton of time and energy down the road. What do you want people to do on your site? The answer needs to be crystal clear. If you are an e-commerce store, then you want people to buy your stuff. If you're a restaurant, you want people to place an order. If you're an online coach, you want people to book a strategy call. Your site needs a primary goal. This is the main reason that you have a website. Without this, your website's just like an online brochure and it doesn't move people in a direction to work with you or to buy from you. Your primary goal needs to be written down, preferably in the free fillable website design checklist for this course. This will keep all of your content ready and in one place. Next, you need a secondary goal. You need a plan B if someone doesn't want to take you up on your primary goal. Sometimes, especially for higher ticket goals, people will not buy or book right away. What can you give them to build trust in exchange for their contact information? You need a way to stay in communication with them, even if they choose not to take action on your primary goal. 
Your secondary goal is also sometimes called a lead magnet. This is a free thing that you can give someone in exchange for their name, email, and sometimes their phone number so that they become a lead. What kind of lead magnet you offer to those just browsing on your website depends on the industry that you're in. Ask yourself, how can I add as much value as possible? Is it a downloadable PDF on how to make the perfect vegan cake? Is it a video course on how to get started with selling real estate? Is it a free fillable website design checklist? Huh? Huh? Look, people are more likely to buy from you when they have first trusted you with a small stepping stone, such as giving you their contact information. Maybe you're thinking like, why do I want someone's email? I don't wanna be emailing anyone. Is email even still a thing? Do email campaigns even work? Do people still open emails from businesses? Well, yes and no. True, the majority of email addresses that you collect may not become customers, but a good percentage of them will. How good? A hundred million billion percent. Up to 5%. Does that seem like a small amount? Well, that depends on how many email addresses that you have and how much your product or service costs. If I sell website design services, which I do, and five people out of 100 take me up on an offer that I send via email, that's a huge win. If you have 100,000 people on the list, then things get really awesome. Make sure that you have both your primary goal and your secondary goal written down before you build your website because it will shape how you build your website. You're gonna wanna make sure that you are directing people towards your primary goal. All of that stuff really, really matters when it comes to creating your website. And if you don't have clear goals, then your website's gonna be confusing and people are just gonna click away. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a site route for your Squarespace website, which will ultimately help you to decide which items to include in your top navigation to make it super easy for people to get around on your website. Your site route is a path that someone will take to fulfill your primary or secondary goal on your website. Most people don't go from the homepage to the checkout right away, and you need to make sure that they have a simple way and a clear way to get all the information that they need to take action. What things will visitors on your site need to know in order to fulfill your primary goal? If I'm a tattoo artist, then people will probably want to see my work, look at my prices, and then learn a little bit about me before they decide to book an appointment. The site route for something like this might look like home, my work, services, about, and then book now. Some site routes might be shorter. A restaurant's route could be home, menu, reviews, order. Or an e-commerce website might be even shorter, home, and then shop. Put yourself in your customer's shoes and think about the types of pages that you would want to see before you bought your product or service. Write down all the possible combinations of your site route for a user to complete your primary goal. What are the essential pages needed for people to learn enough to buy or work with you? These need to be included in your top main menu header navigation. Here are some essential rules for your header navigation on a Squarespace website. Choose no more than five pages for your top header navigation, and notice that the home page doesn't count here. Because if someone clicks on your logo or your site title, then it takes them to the home page. Pretty common knowledge. Any other pages that are important but don't contribute to your primary goal can go in your footer navigation. The fewer items that you have, the easier it will be for the user to navigate. Remember that navigation links can have dropdowns, but you definitely don't want to overdo it here. A quick note about navigation menus for e-commerce stores. Your top navigation will probably be the categories for your stuff. For example, a clothing company might have the top navigation as men, women, and about 
with a drop down or sub menu for categories such as shirts, pants, etc. You're still going to need to map this out, but again, it's good to have this done ahead of time because I'm gonna show you how to create menus and sub menus in a later course. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to write the words, also known as copy, for your homepage of your Squarespace website to keep people on your website and to give them a simple and clear way to work with you. Here are the six essential sections of a landing page or a homepage of a website. Number one, your one-liner and hero section. Number two, your problem section. Number three, a steps or solution section. Number four, an expert and empathy section. Number five, a call to action section. And number six, an imagination section. Let's break each of these down so that you can create them for your website. By the way, I have a free fillable guide that you can download in the description box to keep everything super clear and organized. Studies show that when someone lands on your website, you have about six seconds to help them know exactly what you do. And for that, you need a one-liner. This is a clear way to say what you do or the problem that you solve right away. If people are not sure that you can help them, they will leave. You see, tons of websites say things like great people doing great work or helping you solve your complex problems or it's time to begin to change your life. Here's the rule. If your one-liner can be applied to a different industry, then it is too vague and it needs to be more specific. Can your one-liner also be applied to a church, a restaurant, or a gym? If so, then you need to narrow it down. Here is a simple equation. Who you help plus where you help them plus how you help them plus the benefit you bring. For example, helping dads in the Atlanta area lose weight to feel like themselves again. Or how about this? coaching business owners on the West Coast to grow their company without burning out. Now, obviously, if you're not geographically bound, then you can leave out the location. Here's an example of my one-liner. Helping everyday people grow their business and tell their story with an awesome Squarespace website. It cannot be overstated how much you really need to nail this. This is your elevator pitch, the thing you put on your email signature. It's everything. Calm down, calm down. Next is the problem section. The problem section of your website is so important because it makes what you do valuable and interesting. The best stories have a problem. The best websites also state the customer's problem. This is also super helpful because it makes your customer feel understood. There are three types of problems that you should describe. The physical, emotional, and philosophical problems. The physical problem usually comes down to things like time, money, or energy. For example, you don't have the time to take your clothes to the dry cleaner every day, and traditional dry cleaning is expensive. It's also exhausting to steam and iron your clothes when you just want to hang out with your family. Next, let's go over the emotional problem. This is how the physical problems make your customer feel. For example, you feel frustrated paying so much money, you feel tired from your long day at work, or you feel anxious like you're not giving your family the time and attention that they deserve. Last is the philosophical problem. Here, you state your beliefs. You state if you believe things should or should not be a certain way. For example, you believe that it shouldn't be so hard to have wrinkle-free clean clothes for work every day. Or you believe that you should feel confident and clean at the start of each work week. When people feel that you truly understand their problem, then they're more likely to trust you for a solution. Next is the steps section. Here, you want to show how you will help your customer solve their problem. It's okay if these steps are simplified. They need to be. 
it should seem super easy to do business with you. Even the most simple products have steps. If you look at a microwave popcorn package, it says something like, step one, remove from package. Step two, cook in the microwave for two minutes. And step three, wait for it to cool and enjoy. I know what you're thinking. That's fine for popcorn, but my business, it's way more complicated than that. And to you, my friend, I say exactly. If a simple product has steps, then your complicated product or service definitely needs steps. Having steps, no more than three, makes doing business seem much more simple. It allows people to visualize the process it will take to do business with you. The more simple you can make your steps, the easier it will seem for your customer. Here are the steps that I used for my website. Step number one, use our free guide to organize your website plan to ensure that you have all the essentials, no admission cost, no secret fees. Step number two, learn the fundamentals of Squarespace web design through fun videos and checklists. No code is needed, no boring content. Step number three is to put your new skills to work by designing a one-of-a-kind website for your business or for clients. No grades, no tests. Most businesses struggle to make their steps simple enough. Remember that people do not go to landing pages to read. They skim. It needs to be very easy for the reader to understand the sequence of buying your product or service. Next is the expert and empathy section. This section has two goals. Show people you know what you are talking about and show them that you understand their struggle. You can do this in a few different ways. To show authority, you can display logos of brands that you've worked with, mention where your product or service has been featured, or show testimonials or briefly explain your credentials. To build empathy, revisit the struggle your customer has experienced or any of the problems from the previous section in different wording. For my website, I said, I was a teacher and wanted to create a website. This shows that I have experienced teaching which equals authority. Actually, I have a master's in teaching, but you know, I'm not here to brag. Next, I said, I tried everything, WordPress, Wix, even a Google website. And yes, there are Google websites, and mine was embarrassing. This revisits the struggle. I discovered Squarespace and became obsessed. I spent a ton of time and money taking courses. Again, showing authority and empathy. Back to the example, I said, I learned so much, but I knew that there could be a more simple way in a way that was way more fun. So I created a free way to help people build amazing one-of-a-kind Squarespace websites. It's my way of doing a little good in the world. I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> Next is the call to action section. What do you want your visitor to do? Do you want them to schedule a call, to fill out a form, opt in for a free fillable guide or a lead magnet, start a free course or live chat with you? Whatever you want them to do, you have to tell them in no more than two steps. People will do what you tell them, but you have to explicitly tell them right up front. Last is the imagine section. Here you want your customer to be able to visualize how they will feel after doing business with you. Here's an example that I did for a dry cleaner client. Imagine having all your clothes for the week, crisp and smelling fresh before you go to bed on Sunday. You'll be able to sleep in a little bit longer and take a few more bites of your breakfast because it will take less time to get ready. Here's to slower mornings and longer weekends. Chills, right? Or is it just me? Notice I use words like crisp and fresh and things that we can relate to like sleeping in and chewing our breakfast. These help the reader imagine that they are in that moment. They can see it.
In this video, I'm going to show you how to write the words, also known as copy, for the about page of your Squarespace website so that people have everything that they need to know to feel good about working with you. The about page is about three things. Building empathy with your visitors to let them know that you understand their struggle. Building authority with your visitors to show them that you can help them. And building connections with them on a human level. People like doing business with people. Similar to the empathy and authority section on your homepage, your about page is meant to go deeper, to tell more of your business's story, because people love stories. First, we have the right place section. The right place section of the about page lets visitors know that they have landed in the right place by calling out what they are there for. Here's a template. You state what the customer wants, but you are state what the customer's problem is and then assure them that you can relate. Here is an example. You need some work done on your car, but every shop that you take them to tries to con you into hundreds of dollars of work when you were just looking for a tune up. Is this you too or is it just me? Here's another example. You want to eat and connect with your friends, but you also don't want to feel terrible from unhealthy food afterwards. Can you relate? Next is the build empathy and authority section. Drop your visitors into the middle of the problem that your business tries to solve first. Explain why the business was created. What were you trying to solve when the business was first launched? Here's a template. I or we get it. We knew that other people needed help with, and here's where you state the problem, and that's why we created this. You can say your product or your service or your company name. Now, I or we do state the specific product or service, and then you're gonna say the results. Have X amount of clients or grown X amount of businesses. Do you want to state the solution to their problem once and for all? Here is an example that I created for a teen substance use center. We understand where you were coming from. We knew that there weren't a lot of options for teens to get help, including the members of our own family. We had to change that. A 28 day program wouldn't cut it. They need support that could bring lasting change. That's why we created Sandstone Care, to give teen-specific addiction and mental health services. Now we have grown from that one tiny outpatient facility in Colorado to many locations across the country. We have served hundreds of teens and young adults and helped them overcome substance use and mental health challenges so that they can get back to smiling, graduating and connecting with their families again. Are you ready to give your teen the help that they need? Last, your about page needs to have a call to action section. Tell visitors what they need to do. This should be related to your primary and secondary website goal. Here's an example from the teen treatment center. Call an admissions expert today to get your insurance verified and in the meantime, download our free parent resource guide to learn even more ways that you can support your team. Pictures of you or happy employees, preferably not stock photos, are a must here. Remember, humans buy from humans. The more human your brand seems, the more likely someone is to do business with you. In this video, I'm going to show you how to write the words, also known as copy, for the product or services page on your Squarespace website so that people know right away what you offer and how much it costs. Start with the headline that states their problem and your solution. Keep it short and sweet. Your products and services will always shine brighter after they are compared to the shadowy problems that your customer is facing. Here is the equation, your customer's problem plus the solution that you bring. Example, we understand that you are busy running your business. 
which is why we run smart social media campaigns to grow your audience. Or you want to eat healthy meals at the table with your family without breaking the bank. So we developed a cost-effective meal prep service that will make everyone look forward to dinner again. Each product or service should have the following, a title, a picture, even for digital products, a list of benefits, notice I didn't say features, a price, and yes, you need to display your price, and a call to action button. A title confirms that the buyer is getting the right thing. It can also convey the current state of the buyer. The entrepreneur package versus the executive package might help the buyer determine what might be the right fit for them based on their status. This works for products too. Look no further than Apple for an example. The MacBook Air is meant to convey lightweight flexibility for the digital nomad on the go. The MacBook Pro is meant to show more firepower and increased features. We judge so many things based upon appearances. I'll explain how to make a 3D mock-up later on in the design section of our courses, but what's important for you to know is that you want your image to look appetizing. Delicious. For example, Squarespace sells websites, which are intangible things. Therefore, they often display their services on a laptop. Images matter. Explain the benefits of your product or service in a list. Here, you need to remind the customer how your product or service will help them. Many websites get bogged down in things like how their jeans come in six different colors or how they use reverse stitching on their boot cut. Which one would you buy? Stone washed jeans, six different colors, reverse stitching in the boot, six pockets, multi-fiber blend. Or the ride or die jean, easy matching with any outfit, durable tear proof stitching, secret pockets to stash your valuables, and stretch blend fiber for easy movement. You can see the difference, right? Sell benefits, don't sell features. People know that your stuff costs money, and people don't appreciate having to hop on a call or a demo to learn how much your thing costs. People also don't like being surprised or getting excited about a product or service and then realizing that they can't afford it. If you care about your customer, you want to save them time. You also don't want them to waste your time talking or trying to sell something that's just beyond their budget. If I'm going to get a massage and I view three different local websites, I will immediately dismiss the company that says call for details. Ain't nobody got time for that. Putting your price on your website shows confidence that you are worth it. A quick note about new product or service businesses. New service businesses should try to limit their services to no more than three items. This both helps the customers decide and it helps you to hone in on what you actually do. You may be willing to do a ton of stuff to help your client, but think about what will help them the most. Just a quick note about e-commerce stores. Your services page is your actual shop. That's where you're doing all the benefits and pictures and titles and all that stuff. And don't worry, I have a whole course just for you e-commerce folks. So I'll teach you how to do that too. But really a lot of the same stuff is going to apply to each product or service that you sell on your shop. In this video, I'm going to show you how to write the words, also known as copy, for the portfolio page on your Squarespace website so that you can display what you have done and give people the confidence to work with you. The portfolio page is a place for you to show off all the amazing work you or your business has done. If you have data and examples from past clients, you'll want to make sure that it's here. The name portfolio is not set in stone. You want to make sure that it makes sense with your industry. Whatever you name it, you want it to be very clear that this is where visitors can view past examples of your work. This is the show me page. 
If you're a photographer, video editor, or web designer, you want to put examples of your work here. The portfolio page is a great way to see if the work that you have done is connected to their current needs. If your business works with other businesses, so you're a business to business company, then you want to show charts or graphs that reveal how much money you have made your clients. If you're a gym, then you want to include before and after photographs and testimonials of happy clients. Make sure that the work that you display is attracting your ideal clients. If you're a tattoo artist who hates doing tattoos of sailors and skulls, then don't display that work on your site. Here is a simple way that you can dress up your work to help give the visitor more context. Show a picture or a video of your work. Describe the project. What did the customer want? What was the process like? And did you meet their expectations? Explain the results. How did it improve your client's life? Use your customer's own words in a testimonial with a happy smiling picture of them if available. And then make sure you give them a call to action. A quick note, you wanna make sure that this isn't the only place that you're displaying testimonials or examples of your awesome work. In fact, anytime that you want your buyer to make a decision, it's a good idea to put some sort of social proof or evidence near that. If you want people to buy, then on your checkout page, maybe include a testimonial of somebody who bought your stuff and really loved it. This can help them confirm that they're making the right choice. Repeat this with as much content as you have. A huge portfolio page that shows incredible results makes working with you a no-brainer. And notice that you're not selling here. You are showing. Your results sell for you. In this video, I'm going to show you how to write the words also known as copy for your contact and or your 404 error page so that it's easy for people to schedule or work with you. And even if they somehow get lost, how to get them pointed back in the right direction. A contact page is a must for most businesses. The goal of the contact page is to answer people's questions before they arrive in your inbox and let these informed and ready to work people get in touch with you. Especially with large businesses, you'll see that an FAQ section is usually on the contact page. That's because these businesses have already spent a lot of time answering the same questions over and over. And an FAQ section allows people to call or schedule with you with the confidence and prevents people from wasting your time with unnecessary questions. For your FAQ section, list out your customer's top concerns. Do you take insurance? Do you have vegan options? Are you currently taking new clients? Can I hire you on a consulting basis? Then answer these questions briefly, linking out to other source pages as necessary. This FAQ section can come in handy anywhere on your website where people might have questions about your stuff. The next thing you want to do is to add a search bar to your contact page. Adding the search bar will help people find the stuff that they're looking for without having to fill out a form. Again, the goal here is to not waste your time answering questions that you have already explained somewhere else. You're going to want to make sure that you drop in a contact form and tell people where they can expect a response from you. For example, you could say that we usually get back within 48 hours on business days. You also want to think about the other fields that they should include on their form. Do you need just their email and not their phone number? Do you need an example of their website? Do you want to know the position that they hold within their current company? Now let's talk about writing a 404 error page. If you've been following along with all of these courses, this is gonna be the last primary page where you're gonna write copy for. The 404 error page is shown to anyone who clicks on a broken link or mistypes a URL on your site. All you need to do is to break the tension with a little bit of humor and then point them in a direction where they can get some answers. Here's an example. 
So I think you took a wrong turn. And no worries, use the search bar below to find what you're looking for or check out some of my most popular resources. We'll go over how to build out this page in later courses, but for now, think about a fun couple of sentences that you can use to prevent widespread panic from landing on the wrong page. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to give you nine things that you can do to have an amazing UX or user experience on your Squarespace website and to ensure that nobody ever knows that you designed it yourself. It'll just be our little secret. Also, all of these tips will improve functionality and make your website as user-friendly as possible. Make your text large enough and scannable. It's cool to be artsy, but many websites have fonts that are too small for most people, and they're just gonna click off your website if they are struggling to read it. Use a font base size that is at least 16 pixels, and I'll show you how to set that later. Avoid or minimize cursive fancy writing that is difficult to read, especially for more than a word or two. No one wants to read a paragraph that looks like it was written as the Declaration of Independence. Write paragraphs no longer than three lines. Make the enter button your best friend. People don't read, they skim. And if they see big blocky paragraphs, then they're just going to skip that information because a wall of text is super intimidating. If a paragraph is more than two lines, then left align it. When you have to go to a new place at the beginning of each line, then it's frustrating for the reader. Just make it easy, left align it. Use spacing in your sections. People do not like to read or view things from one side of their computer to the other side or from the far left to the far right. Reduce the cognitive load by using spacing meaning space on the sides and in between sections of your content. Use different sections of a web page every time that you're completing a new thought. For example, each section on your homepage design should have a different look and feel. This makes things interesting for your browser and helps to organize your material. Each section should be roughly the same size as a page or a scroll depth. Think of this like a PowerPoint slide presentation that only scrolls down. There will be a similar tone and style between the pages, but the actual content and the topic will be different. Number two, use a button at the top right of your website. Studies show that the first thing that our eyes are drawn to is the top right of a website. Then our eyes scroll left and then they scroll to the middle. Number three, use a search bar in your footer navigation. This is great for a few reasons. Generally, it's helpful for the searcher to be able to find stuff on your website. Also, as you get more and more traffic to your website, you can go into Google Analytics to see what people are searching for on your site. Having that information will allow you to do a few things. It'll help you to get to know your customer more and to answer common questions ahead of time on your site. You can also display content that more aligns with your visitors' goals. Number four, make your Squarespace website photo quality great, even if you're not a pro photographer. If you have professional photography, awesome, use it. If you are like most people that don't, then you're gonna have to get a little creative. Use stock photography smartly. If you're using stock photography from free websites like Pexels or Unsplash, then try to use photos of the same photographer throughout one page. Also think about modifying photos in Canva to make them more interesting. And I'll walk you through how to do this whole thing step by step later on in our design course. Use shapes or frames for photos. Change the color of photos. Use photo overlays or filters like the ones on PixArt or Be Funky to create an animated or unique look. 
or opt out of photos altogether and just use animated graphics or icons and shapes. Use clip art or graphics like the ones on Undraw to display art in a consistent way without a single human model. Number five, keep your photo image size below 500 kilobytes. Large photo sizes for image blocks or backgrounds are the number one thing that slows down load speed of a website. Here are the photo basics. In general, a PNG is a larger file size than a JPEG. While you want to make sure that any image uploaded to your Squarespace website is under 500 kilobytes, it also needs to keep its crisp quality. An easy way to do this is to run your photo through tinypng.com. They'll compress the file and then you can see the sizes of the original and the compressed version. Number six, make sure that your image and backgrounds do not clash with your text. It's important to make sure that people can actually read your text and that the backgrounds that you use in the images have a contrasting color. And there's a few ways to accomplish this. Change the image or the text color. Blur the image or background. Change the focal point of an image. And again, more on this later, but it's still good to be thinking about it now. Number seven, make your opt-in pages simple and direct. An opt-in page or a landing page is a page that has just one goal, usually tied to your primary or secondary goal. It's the finish line. It's the place where someone is going to decide whether to buy your product or service or not. Have one call to action on this page and repeat it multiple times. Your homepage might have a button for someone to learn more about you and your company to view your services in detail or to look at your portfolio. However, the opt-in page is meant to either make the sale or get someone's contact info. The calls to action should be simple, direct, and clear. You could say, subscribe now, buy now, begin learning for free. These are all types of CTAs. It's okay to change up the wording for these buttons, but the destination should be the same. Number eight. If you have a picture of your product, then use it. If it's a digital product, then create a 3D mockup, and more on this later. Use a picture of a person looking at and or pointing at the opt-in form or button. People look where other people are looking. Number nine, make sure that your navigation is simple and clear. Now, websites are a great place to express creativity, but your header menu is a bad place to be creative. It's a map, and we generally don't like visually creative maps. In general, only have five or fewer navigation items, and don't name your blog Ramblings on Life. Just call it blog. Keep the letters to a minimum. This is important, especially because your menu bar gets condensed on mobile. The shorter your words, the better. If you absolutely have to, you can use a drop-down submenu on an item, but even this should be kept very simple. Anything else that is important but is not linked to the primary or secondary goals of your website, that can go in the footer. There are some things that need to go in your footer, like your privacy policy or terms of service, and more on that stuff later. In this video, I'm going to give you six things that you can do to make your product more buy-worthy on your Squarespace website. Number one, if a shop is only one part of your business, then have just one shop link in the header. If e-commerce is your business, then your header might just be different categories of your stuff, like men, women, tops, bottoms, shoes, etc. It can be okay to have more than five navigation items if you're strictly an e-commerce shop. Number two, include a search bar, but only allow it to search your products. And more on how to do this later. Number three, remember that product titles can be keyword rich. Name your products what you think people might type into search engines. 
Also, be clear, don't call your running shoes foot sweaters with rubber bottoms. Call them women's minimalist running shoes. Number four, use great photos for your products. I mean, duh, right? But also try to include multiple photos from different angles, depending on the product and the features that you want to highlight. Also, it can be a great idea to use a recognizable visual reference for your photos. It's helpful to have something in your photos that gives a reference to how big or small your product is. For example, if you sell mugs, showing a person holding your mug will give the shopper a better reference for its size. Photos can also be useful when trying to display the different uses and sizes of your product. Show your product on a variety of models, especially for clothes. Everybody's body is different and you don't want someone to not buy your product because all your models are super skinny or super jacked. Also, before and after photos can help your shopper visualize how the product will work. Number five, answer common questions people may have about your product. Especially around size, people don't do well with numerical measurements. Don't say it's eight inches tall and four inches wide. Say it's about the size of a DVD case. <laughs> do, does anybody even really remember those anymore? I don't know. Choose something that everybody has an understanding for. It's the, the size of a penny or the size of a dime, something. You can give those physical measurements too, but don't just rely on those. Use comparisons to help determine which version of a product is best for them. When displaying multiple versions of a product, stack each version next to one another so that they can do a quick comparison at a glance. Help people find your product or service based upon a goal. Sometimes, especially for supplement products, it can be challenging to know which product you need. People may not know the difference between oolong tea and rooibos tea, but if you help them search for their stuff based upon goal, for example, eczema relief or antioxidant boost or help you sleep, then you can then display the teas that offer those benefits. Number six, keep options simple for better results. Sometimes less is more. Option anxiety is a real thing. Studies have shown that giving people fewer items to choose from can actually encourage them to buy more. We have all been to a restaurant that displays a novel for a menu, and these places often don't do one thing exceptionally well. However, a fancy restaurant displays just a few items to show how much effort and care goes into each dish. Whether you are a large or a small business, keeping your options simple and clear will drive more sales. So if you want to sell products, less is more. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use other website examples for inspiration without being a copycat. It's good to have an idea of what you like and what you don't like for your website before you start building. Most people who start out creating a website do one of two things. They choose a Squarespace template and then struggle to fit their content into preset boxes, or they copy another website example that looks like everyone else in their industry. You don't want to fall into either of these traps and you don't have to. Website templates are great for ideas, but they shouldn't limit your vision. Here is how to get inspiration from other websites and examples without copying them. Canva is a free design tool that I absolutely recommend for any Squarespace website build. Now you can totally use Canva for free, but I totally recommend their $12 a month subscription because you get a ton of extensive images and templates and the ability to download PNGs with transparent backgrounds. It's a whole thing. I'm just saying you can use it for free, but that $12 a month is going to be well worth it. Okay, so I wasn't clear, you need Canva. Presentation templates in Canva are great for your website design inspiration for a few reasons. They show layouts like you would see on a web page. 
They show cool color palette combinations. They have a ton of great icons, photo frames, and combinations of photo frames that will make it super easy for you to customize. The key here is to choose sections that vibe with the type of website that you are going to create. For example, don't choose a photo heavy template if you don't have a ton of professional photography. Feel free to select colors from one template and icons and images from another template. Your next stop for website design inspiration is going to be Pinterest. Pinterest has a large number of website design pins that you can save to a board of your own. I like using the following search terms when I'm trying to find some inspiration. I'll look at presentation layouts, UI or UX design, website, cool website designs, and modern website designs. You can also follow my curated Pinterest board of website layouts to save even more time. The key here is looking at other templates and examples to pull out how they laid something out without trying to copy what they actually laid out. For example, you might like the way that they use a call to action section, but you definitely don't want to copy the photo that they use in that call to action section. Also, it doesn't matter if it's Squarespace website examples or WordPress or any other type of website design examples. You can get inspiration from anything and you're gonna be pretty much able to create anything by the time you're done with all of these design courses. You might even create different boards for different types of sections that you will need for your website, such as your homepage or your about page, your shop or portfolio, etc. Use other websites for inspiration. Go through your favorite websites and jot down why they are your favorite. Is it their easy navigation? The, the way that they use their graphics? Is it their colors? You can pull your favorite things from each of these websites, just as long as that they are parts and not everything. Remember, you're gonna have a slightly different feel for each new page of your website, depending on its goal. This can be especially helpful when you pull from industries that are very different from your own. For example, I like the color scheme and the graphics of Headspace in the blog layout of Backlinko. Think of it like a beautiful Frankenstein yeah. creation where you're choosing the things on the websites that spark joy for you. And yes, I love a Marie Kondo reference. Screenshot these specific sections and then upload them to Canva to use them for inspiration later on. Or copy and paste the URL that you love into your free and fillable website design checklist. You did it! Honestly, that stuff is the hardest part. Now you're ready to put all of that planning to work and to actually design your website. Check out the next course in the description box or at the end cards. And then make sure to comment below if you have a question about anything from this whole planning course, and I will respond. Let's put the art back into content marketing. I'll see you on the next video.